Let come sunshine Search my heart and know you will find There's love for you All I got is love for you Oh yeah, yeah There's no lie I will hold you Pour me a drink I'm taking a different kind of coffee today Trying out something new Being explorative I like the weather lately very conducive for coffee drinking even though i'm not supposed to be drinking coffee after 12 but hey we're running a late night show here what can i do you're welcome to amazing minds up this first late night show if you're not subscribed to the podcast you can catch the show right here on youtube every monday wednesday and friday 20 hours central african time and you can subscribe hit that notification bell and share all right hot enough cup is changing i always look out for this um the podcast is available mondays wednesdays and fridays 20 hours central african time on google podcasts apple podcasts and spotify uh we just had a friday show what were we talking about i tried to keep track uh continued gifts of the spirit we're talking about word of wisdom you would want to check that out i think we had fun last week we were talking about mouse sampa was it mouse sampa we were talking about last week what were we discussing last week Remind me. Last week we were discussing about the the Speaker of the National Assembly. Speaker of, ah. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Parliament, the, shenanigans, and UPND and are arrests, here to stay. The arrests. Well. Apparently, and the arrests as well. I'm here with Chofaya in studio. How are you doing, sir? Yeah, come see, come sir. Come see, come sir. Feels yeah. like I haven't seen you in a while. I okay. was, I did Wednesday and Friday alone last week, eh? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, we are slowly gravitating to a solo Wednesday show, it seems. Uh, <laughs> Chofia is... I was feeling the same thing. Oh, really? Oh, really? I was feeling that we are gravitating towards... towards the, yeah. uh, so what did you think about... Did you get a chance to watch it, though? We're talking about dental health and whatnot. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. I see, I saw that. Oh, what did you think? It was good, actually. Very good. was good? Yeah. And okay. it had a lot of traction. It did. Yeah. Oh, we are. Uh, and I couldn't miss it because someone just uh, came for me and started uh, harassing me on social media <laughs> about my dental. I think I saw that. <laughs> yeah. About your dental, uh, your dental, dental health, health and how you were. Yeah. Yeah. So I couldn't miss it. Mm. Mm. So All right. uh, last week was um, was there. It was good, eh? No, it was there. It was there? Yeah, I mean my week. I, I, I'm not oh, talking about week. the show. Oh, okay, because I enjoyed the Monday show. I think it was good. I enjoyed the Wednesday show. Yeah, me too. Um, I learned a lot. Mm-hmm. And we had me too, extra actually. extra conversations here as well with him. Uh, Afterwards? Yeah, behind the scenes. So you, you know, mm-hmm. as the one hosting the show, you always get to learn more then. Yeah. Mm. There's also those, those pieces of knowledge that you say, ah, this one should be deleted. <laughs> uh, just so people don't know <laughs> keep people in suspense anyway if you're not subscribed please subscribe hit that bell and share uh, show is available once again mondays wednesdays and fridays uh 20 hours central african time and you can listen to the podcast on google podcasts apple podcasts and spotify so today we have a number of things we're discussing not too many uh things we had uh quite a number of things happened in the news last week quite intense uh we had a pastor from a terror <laughs> who was allegedly uh, caught on top of another woman uh, by her husband. I don't know how true it is. Chofia will tell us more. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're discussing the killing of a boy in Mufulira by the ZNS uh, over Millimil. It was a crossfire, apparently. And we will be discussing the gold scam and how the court session will be in camera. Chofia tells me that doesn't mean what I think it does, but yeah, it will be held in camera. So once again, you guys are welcome to the show. I hope you're loving the show so far. I think it's been quite a journey. What do you think? No, yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, it's been quite a journey. That's what I can say. It's been quite a journey. Yeah. I, I hope, hope, I, hope pe- nice. I hope people are subscribing. Please press Please, that button. Don't be a ninja watcher. Subscribe, hit that bell and share. Subscribing alone is a decoration. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to hit that bell. Uh, yeah, so we had a number of things that happened last week. Oh my goodness, how has my whole screen changed? Can you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we had a number of things happening in the news last week. To begin with, we had... What's going on? 
No journalists and the public gallery in gold scam case court direct. So this case, according to the court, has been uh, classified as one of those that need top security. And so no cameras. I didn't know that in-camera trial means no cameras. Okay. Why do they say in-camera if no cameras are allowed? Well, I don't know. And uh, maybe I'm not qualified to answer that question. We need Bruce on the show, eh? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For such a question. Yeah. But what are your thoughts on the fact that they are not allowing the public? Does it, does it sound suspicious to you? Of course, yes. I think it, if it doesn't sound suspicious to you, then you should check yourself. To begin with, how many cases in court are actually open to the public and journalists? I actually don't know that. Oh, every case is, is open every case until, that, yes. So can we as journalists go to court and record? Yes, you can. No, you can't record. You can record by writing. You can't record No, video. you can't take a video. No. Okay. Okay. Mm. So when they say in camera, mm -hmm. are they referring to... I, anyway, I don't get the statement. I think yeah, yeah, anyone yeah. legal, if you, if you can leave it in the comments for us just to help us understand what in camera... Or oh, uh, why they call it in camera. Yeah, why yeah. they call it in yeah. camera so judge ruth chibabaku ordered when delivering ruling following an application by the state that the case be held in camera to safeguard public interest in the ruling judge chibabaku granted the state's application because the court was compelled to do so once the state assesses that the evidence that is to be presented before the court may be prejudicial they are entitled to make this application which this court is obliged to grant Judge Babaku read during the ruling. So as long as uh, the state is able to prove that uh, the contents of this case may be prejudicial, uh, I'm assuming so that So they don't have to prove, actually. They don't have to they prove? They just have to make their own assessment as a, as a state. They don't have to prove. Because in the process of proving... So who's doing the applying for an in, in camera? It's the state. It's the state, right? Yes. So who has to do the proving or the, the assessment? It's the state. The state has to assess... Yes, as long as the state I'm assesses. I'm assuming here the, the court and the state are treated separately. Yes. So when the state assesses mm -hmm. and presents their findings to the court, mm -hmm. then the court agrees with the state's, of, the state's are, findings. Yes, exactly. Why doesn't the court do their own assessment? Well, as, as I said, my, maybe that's uh... my legal mind. <laughs> Tell me what you think. Yeah, so like, I can say what I think. So first of all, I would just like to take the people back to remember that when this thing happened, initially when it broke out, of course, we had people who had cameras there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this was in public I thought interest. you just said there were no cameras. No, I'm not talking about in court. Okay. I'm talking about when this case broke out at the KK International Airport. Yeah. So we had cameras there. We there. played you guys footage. Exactly. Uh, was that the time we had? The, that was before you came, right? When we had uh, John, uh, what's his name? Ken Dumbo. Ken Dumbo, yeah. That was that's prior, a, right? Yeah, okay. that's the time you had Ken Dumbo, yes. Yes, yes. That's the very week you had Ken Dumbo. Yeah. So, you know, this thing was has been in public domain. We had cameras. They are even uh, making videos of the, the purported goat, which yeah. the state later denied. And then we saw a reaction you from... You mean the, 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 the gold that they were counting at the airport? Yes. The state denied that what? That that's not good. Oh, that it's quoted. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you remember that immediately we had a response from the minister of... Uh, I think minister of mines. Yeah. Who had come to us and told us to say, ah, no, that's not uh, gold. That's just uh, painted gold, but it's <laughs> zinc and other mm. items. Mm. You remember when that happened, people asked a lot of questions. They yeah. said, we know God when we see it. No, zinc and copper do not move in aircrafts. They move on trucks. So there's something fishy. Mm. And then we also saw another minister come in. I think that was the minister of home affairs who said, uh, this thing should not be, uh, no one should seemingly like talking about the other minister to say no one should comment about this because this is a police case. Yeah. So until ACC and DEC and the police do the investigations, those are the people that are mandated to comment on this, not even us, the ministers. So seemingly talking about the friend who already commented on it. Not only that, we also heard the president himself comment on it. What did he say? He said, uh, it doesn't matter who you are. Mm. If you commit a crime, you are going to face a crime on your own. Mm. And then you're, afterwards, you're on your own. exactly. Then afterwards, we saw some names that were listed, and mm. to me, that's where another thing that is fishy comes in, because there was a state house official involved. Oh really? Yes. Oh, I've state heard rumors of that. Yes, uh, it's actually true. His it's name is known. True. Yes, that uh, should be Francis Matteo. I hope we are 
guaranteed of freedom after speech but yeah go on. no but the, his name is in public <laughs> <know. laughs> exactly joke, <laughs> yeah so there's a francis mateo who is a security <laughs> official at state house yeah. and uh haka in the hdm yeah yes so what now exactly that, was his involvement in the whole so thing? we don't know hmm. we don't know we wouldn't know right now and now we can't know since it's N- now we can't know because they are, they are saying that some of the information would be prejudicial to the state yeah if uh, put in public domain yeah so in short what they are saying us is that uh, there are a lot of things in that case that could actually implicate the cha- the the not the church <laughs> the state <laughs> oh i know i changed the slides <laughs> <laughs> You're excited for <laughs> no, I'm actually no, no, no. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, actually I'm eager to talk about the ZNS kid. Oh, shows. really? Yeah, ah, I think you're excited for the next one. You are no. trying to finish your point quickly, <laughs> trying to look at, yeah. So, to me, it, it raises the questions what are they hiding? I mean, if we do not hear, if we do not hear from the minister initially, yeah, if we do not hear that a state house official is involved, probably the questions could have been lessened. But now we know that there's a state house official involved in that case. Yeah. A state house official working for our president Haga in the HDM. Would you happen to know what position he is a security official? Security official. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean this all looks fishy. And now there's nothing that we can do. You know, the yeah, the challenge is where things have reached, there's nothing anyone can do. Uh we can just sit back and watch. Yeah where things have reached it is out of the people's hands yeah but you know it's also it also uh, shows and tells a lot about our uh, our people who we have in leadership yeah and also just how the state conducts its business it tells us a lot when we see that yeah though i would like to separate the state from the court i don't know whether no because it's the state that applied for that or it's the state that applied for that it's so, the state so in that this, but, but in that this thing the, the court is being objective right Oh, because they are, they are ruling. yeah, because this, as they said, procedural on their part. Yes, as they said, they have no option. Yeah. So the state, the the, the courts are does separated. That, does that mean that if a case is made, if an application is made for in-camera ruling, as long as we provide some kind of assessment of our own, if let's say it's a criminal case, mm-hmm. I'm a plaintiff, mm-hmm. um, there's a defendant. Mm-hmm. If we make a, an application, mm-hmm. there is obligation on their part, or does it only apply to the state? I don't it's, understand. I Maybe think I need the, to do a bit more. So yeah, I think this. so. I wouldn't say I know that, but I yeah. think this only applies to the state. This probably only applies to the state. Yes, exactly. Because what they are saying is that there is information if given to the public would be prejudicial. So it's more to like the um, uh, what do you call that? Public order? No, no, no. Mm, anyway, national yeah. security probably. Yes, something like that. Mm. That's what they are saying. Okay. Yeah, but to me, okay, in simple terms, what they are saying is that the eh, case and do a convey of a maybe not stick exactly is actually implicate eh, people who are in power right now. In short, you think so? Yes, and it's so bad that they have to go <laughs> to that extent because eh, they know that. Wait, did they outrightly say that? Do you think is that no, an assumption that, on that, your part? No, it's not an assumption. That's the interpretation of the English. Let's have a look, please. Once the state assesses that the evidence that is to be presented before the court may be prejudicial, they are entitled to make this application, which the court is obliged to grant. There is no discretion on the part of the court to hold uh, otherwise, no matter how the arguments of the defense. So regardless of the argument of the defense, Mm -hmm. as long as the state can provide yes. some some form of assessment and evidence that there'll be prejudice mm-hmm. after this. Couldn't prejudice apply to anything else apart from uh, government leaders being implicated? Uh, well, it could because they are saying that uh, to be it's it's in the interest of state security. Yeah. So yeah, their front is that uh, it will to, there will be to, to there will be a problem. Public, public yes, there will be a problem on state security. But they, you just have to look at the case itself. Yeah. and look at who is involved you put one and two together exactly mm. yeah so it does to it does me sure they're hiding I remember something when Ken Dumbo was here he talked about how the plain number that was on the <laughs> exactly <laughs> on yes the you remember that yes different. yes exactly yeah so there are a lot of moving parts but he was this. really trying to guarantee his freedom after speech so <laughs> he didn't want to say much <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah so to me it actually just says a lot about the state and how they conduct their business and yeah. especially the current leadership that we have I think it is very questionable. I agree. Mm. I agree. Anyway, moving on. Bishop John General, the man who has 
the country running on its toes. So this past week, apparently, take note of that word, apparently, a husband <laughs> caught a pastor of Matero uh, on top of his wife on their mat matrimonial bed. And the story goes on to say that he uh, went to pray for the lady because she requested prayers over an issue of constantly uh, miscarrying in her pregnancies. And so it's alleged that he said, uh, these prayers need to be conducted in your house. And so he went there with another gentleman. Did you did you get to read the story? I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm really paraphrasing yes, it for them. Yes, I did. So apparently they went there with another gentleman and uh, the pastor said, ah, let me look through the rooms of the house. And uh, it so happened that his eyes landed on the bedroom. Mm. It is alleged. So the guy, the guy is not only paraphrasing, he's also dramatizing the whole thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it is alleged that when the husband came, so firstly, it is alleged that he forced himself on her. Then secondly, it's alleged that when the husband came, he greeted the guy who, who remained in the, in, the, in, the, in the sitting room to shout 5 oh, but <laughs> somehow didn't. And the husband went to the bedroom and found the pastor on top of his wife. And the pastor found his way out of the house, leaving his car, his clothes, and jumped the fence. There's a video I can't play for you here, but I saw one of a, a man jumping a face uh, a fence unclothed. I don't know if you watched that. Uh, most likely it's not the... Uh, yeah, because, I mean, there was no one taking videos. <laughs> it probably but, isn't. At that point, no one yeah. took videos. It probably isn't. My sanctified mm. eyes were offended by watching that video, but yeah. Yeah, because, I, you know, also we've got this tendency of if there's there's uh, something that is running, a viral thing like this, we tend to just get also to We get videos, clips so. from all... Yeah. Exactly, yeah. You'll find that man was Ugandan. Yeah. Running away from a dog. Mm. I think one thing you, you didn't mention in the ordeal is that uh, the man find his way found his way out because the husband, the wife, who was uh, being sexually assaulted, according to the police statement, went to try to lock the gate. He, was, he oh, went he to went lock to, the gate. To try to lock the gate. Yes. Oh, yeah. And so also, I, I, I neglected to mention also that the bishop found his way on top of the man's wife by threatening her with a gun, apparently supposedly yeah yeah go on yeah, yeah exactly so i just wanted to clarify that that, uh, that the man like the man ran the man away said it, say, was there. um wait i'm yeah. coming let yeah. me lock the gate i yeah. should find you here and then the pastor found occasion mm. to run yeah of course uh i've heard some people questioning to say but how do you find your wife having uh sex with another man in your bed and then the first thing you do is go and try to lock the gate. Yeah, you know, the whole story is fishy. Firstly, mm. if we are, since it's a pastor we're talking about here, do you remember Joseph in the Bible? The mm. guy who was thrown into the pit by his brothers? Mm. Do you remember that Potiphar's wife had evidence of a crime he didn't commit? She had his court. She said, no, this is his court. He was in my room. She had evidence of a crime he didn't commit. And that's why I keep saying allegedly, because we don't know for a fact whether this is true or not what do you think yeah of course i mean uh ah, of course my my thought doesn't from your area <laughs> material yeah, yeah. I, i'm not proud that these things are happening yeah and uh, of course it's not up to us to to say whether it was rape or not or my opinion does not really carry any water right now yeah yeah but also i would like to say to the people that we are saying that uh, a man can't react in such a way when they find their their wife being slept with on their mm. bed yeah, I'd like to say that uh, the vehicle, his, that man's vehicle was outside. So probably the man went out to lock the gate to ensure that that vehicle does not leave because that's exhibit. Yeah. There was also a question where, uh, that's, uh, that's how I even learned that uh, apparently during the same time, the wife to the prophet, uh, this John General, mm. is out of the country. Okay. Yeah, because uh, one of the men asked to say, uh, so you guys, did you call your, your pastor's wife to tell her to say, Did you do that? So the women started hesitating. They mm -hmm. ended up saying, I know the woman is out. Of course, other questions were asked, like, did you call anyone from church or something? Yeah. So to me, actually, uh, just uh, to conclude on my part, I think the biggest problem that we have is that we worship human beings. Yeah. We worship pastors rather than God. Yeah. We worship my pastors more than God. Mm. Uh, of course, I know that you uh, there's respect that is according, according to the pastors, which is only uh, fair. 
but then starting to worship them because it made me just try to go back and just see some of the videos of the same John General. He's a small God. Okay. Yes. He's a small God. So to me, it starts from there. Mm. Once that person is a small God, tomorrow they will tell you, oh, for, for me to pray for you, I have to, what, I have what to come What do you mean when house. you say he's a small God? You mean the, the, way, the way that is treated. treated? Exactly. The way that is treated. Mm. It's like they are, they, are, they are dealing with a king. I say it's more God because it looks like it's more than a king. Yeah. Yeah. So from there, that's where now, because I also saw the way uh, in the, the, the video taken in the bedroom, I saw the way the, the, the man, the husband, was addressing the whole issue. It's like the man was actually afraid. Of the, of the bishop? Not only the bishop, but also afraid of the wife. He was afraid of his wife? Yes. Why? And the bishop as well. Even the way that he was calling the wife, you know, Mamami, calling the, pre, the, the prophet, but daddy. What the hell? That's where all these things are coming from, to me. Because at the end of the day, the man will see your beautiful wife, and tomorrow they will say, oh, these miscarriages that you have. Because the fact of the matter is that mm. there are health conditions where you'll be facing miscarriages. Yeah. But we choose not to go that part. Instead, we'll go to the papa, and then that papa will come to you and say, for me to do this, I need to come to your house. Mm. And then for me to do this in your house, we need to go into your bedroom. Because this man, you treat him like he's a god. Yeah. Yeah. I guess because my, my this is not the first time it's happening. With, actually, with the same pastor? No, not with the same pastor. Actually, the same pastor, this is not the first uh, case I've heard from him. Accusation. Accusation, yeah. Mm. And not only the rape issue, I think the other accusation he had is that he prayed for some woman who couldn't conceive. After she conceived, he started ex extorting money from her. Oh, really? Until she went to the police. Yeah. And you know, these people, I think that they're also magicians. Yeah. They manipulate people, they use sorcery. That's what I believe. Okay. Yeah, that's why they they even end up being uh, treated as. Uh, Do you then believe boys. that there are people who genuinely uh, move in power? Move in power? Yeah. Of course, yes. But I know when I like when I see someone who's not moving in power, who is using magic, like John General, I see and I say. Don't okay. you think that's a big assumption to make? Oh well, okay. I take that back. Mm. I'm not saying John General uses magic. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that many of these people. You know why? Not. Why I bring up? Why I say things like that? Mm. The stance I take generally when it comes to anyone that calls themselves a mm. pastor or a prophet, man of God. Yes, or a man of God. Mm. I say, okay, mm -hmm. you're a man of God. Mm. I would rather address them the way they call themselves, mm -hmm. prophet. Okay, mm. yeah, prophet. And then the other thing. Yeah. Um, in the copper belt, there was a similar case. Yeah. For them, it was as bad as these parents went to this man, this papa, because uh, the, the, the child, their child had a problem, their mm. girl child, an underage person, by the way, a juvenile. Mm. So I don't know, I, I think it was an issue with the, the menstrual cycle. So they went to get this man to pray for the child. And then this man suggested that eh, they go and pray for the daughter at a lodge. <laughs> yes, as funny as that may sound, this is something that happened in your, here in our country. Mm. And then the stupid parents, they stayed at the reception, and the man said, "I need to go to pray with you." Uh, don't for tell your me child they paid for the in room. a room. But I don't know. <laughs> but it's just stupid that they went with the man. Uh, yeah. Yes. And then in what the end, thinking? in the end, the man molested the child. In such cases, I almost believe that they are using some form of hypnotism on, on people. Yes, because so there's all I those mean, things. If you, are, mm. if you are reasonable enough, mm -hmm. you should be able to assess something like that. So if you are reasonable enough, let's stop treating these people as small gods. Let's worship God. Yeah, I think the biggest challenge in mm. Christendom mm. generally is that we have a very small percentage of Christians that have a relationship with their Bibles, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is at least the starting point, the foundation of our relationship with God mm. uh, before we explore and go further outside of, of of what's written in the Bible I think we should have already developed a relationship with the Bible yeah. and as long as we haven't done that it's easy to be deceived mm. uh, because many Christians base their knowledge on what they've been taught in their Christian circles and not necessarily what they've read themselves you yeah. know the reason why I'll tell you that it's not very easy to determine whether someone is using the power of God or magic on the basis of what you see mm. it's because there are certain things that god has done in the bible for example that mm. you would think are rituals 
like Jesus tells his disciples, "Hey, uh this bread eat my body, mm-hmm. drink my blood." Mm-hmm. Uh if a pastor said that today it would be considered rituals. Mm-hmm. And I mean, the people that were doing that didn't even fully understand who Jesus was. Mm-hmm. So that's why I think it's yeah. a bit tricky. That's why I would rather just oh you call yourself a prophet cool mm. you're a prophet all right moving on 15 year old boy dies after being accidentally shot by the zns shot at by the zns so to begin with he wasn't just shot at he was shot uh i don't know how accidental it was but brief facts of the matter are that the zns soldiers were conducting the anti-smuggling operation in the township and during the process at unknown house number suspected to be keeping millimil as they wanted to get into the house that is how they met resistance and in the process they started firing live bullets he said now uh here's the resistance Apologies, that's quite a disturbing video seeing someone being shot. Did you guys see the boy that was shot? If you didn't, you can just rewind. I won't play that again. It's horrifying. Wait, is that how he died? Yeah. Did he die on the spot yeah. or he was Yeah, and I'd also like to say that uh, uh, the, the, the police, of course, said the ZDNS were carrying out an operation at a house. Not that this was their resistance. I know it was a joke. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, it's really heartbreaking. It is. Yeah. It's really heartbreaking. And uh, honestly, uh, I, I, I place the blame on the state and ultimately the UPND government. Mm. Because, uh, of course, we have got overzealous people. And I should mention that I've got a, a great respect for our military wings. Yeah. It's including the Zambia National Service. Yeah. Yeah, because these guys have been generally disciplined, so disciplined in the past. They the way they've conducted themselves. Yeah. But also not to say that there are no bad eggs or bad actors. Because they are there. Mm-hmm. And that's why we're here today. So I blame the states and ultimately the UPND government. And further, I think I would blame the commander in chief. Because this has happened in the past before. This is not the first time. It has happened a lot. So you saw Frank Mugala being gunned down yeah. very mercilessly. Uh, we saw Saman Sama being gunned down. Mm. And we the saw... Two examples being in the previous government, right? In the previous government. Yeah. I can also give you another one that happened in this regime. Yeah. There was a noble Mulenga who was shot in For me, my uh, question Kasama. comes to... Do you really think these uh, decisions for an officer to fire mm-hmm. uh, would trickle... The app backwards. That's where I'm going to. That's where I'm going yeah. to. Because to start with, so these are different cases and we can look at them in isolation. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, when soldiers, when police are conducting an operation, they have they have a chain of command. Yeah. No gun carrying police will just shoot without being told that they are, they are allowed to shoot. Mm. Now, that's one thing. The second thing is that there are some people who are overzealous. These are the bad actors that I'm talking about. Mm who just act from from their own volition, you know? And uh, to be honest, sometimes it could be that someone fired by mistake. Mm. They didn't mean to actually pull the trigger, but they did. Which actually said, it says a lot about their training. Because a real trained soldier would not, a pull, would not pull a trigger by mistake. Their mm. job is to safeguard our sovereignty as a country. Yeah. So a, an actual trained soldier who's worth his sort, who's worth the name of a soldier, cannot pull a trigger by mistake. Yeah. Now, I blame the state because in these instances that I've told you, starting from the PF government, Frank Mugala, a kid as well, yeah. Saman Sama, an innocent person, yeah. and I'm deliberately mentioning people who are not part of an organization like a political They were not necessarily political. Yes. These were just minding their yes. own business. Yes, Vespa mm-hmm. Shimujira mm. was also killed at the highest learning institution by the police. Yeah. And of all these... I would like to also mention the other person who I just mentioned who was killed in the UPND government. Mm. This is a, a noble Mlinga. Yeah. There's another person, a 21-year-old, uh, Kelvin Mwamba, who's nursing his injuries in UTH. The mom is actually on, his, on her knees right now because mm. she cannot handle him. He's been left with lifelong injuries and he's in UTH right now. Mm. 
Mm. And of all these cases that I'm mentioning, we've had zero. Uh, we've had no one take account of this. No one has been arrested. No one. No has one has been charged. arrested for these things. At least when we when we look at our friends in the United States, they actually arrest officers. For yes, for Ves, for yeah. Vespa Shimujira, the family was paid the five hundred thousand kwach as yeah. compensation to bring her soul back. I don't know what the hell they were trying to do. <laughs> and uh, the UPND cadres who were with the Haka in the Hichilema in prison during his treason times yeah. for those days, they were paid six million oh, for really? compensation. Oh, really? This is what is happening in our country. Oh, wow. In Kasama, this guy was shot on the 2nd of June. Nothing has happened. No one has been brought to book for this. Yeah. And you know, to us, to some people, this might just be a story that we're talking about. One of the stories that we're talking about on our show. Yeah. But to some people, these are actual lives that have been lost. They are people that are in deep pain. People's right lives now. have been altered forever. Yeah. In uh, such brutal ways. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that it's, hard to, it's high time that the state needs to take responsibility. Yeah. As a matter of fact, speaking of people being hurt and... and, uh -huh. and Already today, changed. seven days, by the way, since, uh, since uh, Crispin was shot at. Who's since Crispin? Crispin was killed. Oh, the same Crispin boy. is a boy, yes. Yeah. It's been seven days since he was killed today. Yeah. And we have not uh, had anyone being brought to to book. Yeah. Now, <laughs> honestly, I thought that President Akainde was a better leader. I thought HH, I thought uh, UPND was a better group. But alas, we are here again. Uh, yeah. Anyway, speaking of people that are totally changed by this, uh, we have a video of a woman. I would like to believe this was the mother complaining. No, this should be the grandma. This this yeah. this was the grandma, right? Yeah. Yeah, complaining about the the death of the said boy mm. and asking for the leaders of the ZNS to come mm. and be questioned. <laughs> Yeah, she is quite hurt. Yeah, this is a time bomb to me. Mm. And if this keeps on happening, we're going to create a very dangerous situation. Mm. Yeah, because you know, for me, the problem is uh, if we do not bring these people to account, this is the reason why it keeps on happening. Mm. If because in the they past, know there is going to be yes, they know out. that they'll be shooted. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember a case of an officer being arrested by the police mm -hmm. and killed in the cells? Yes, a staff officer. Nothing really happened to those officers. Yeah, they were somehow mm. mysteriously protected. Yeah, and you and know why he was arrested? Another, that guy. It was a traffic offense. It was a traffic offense. Yes, yeah. and we had another officer, a staff officer this time, mm. who slapped a woman mm -hmm. and broke her eardrum and her neck. And the case is been quiet. I don't know. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, I think I heard that. Yeah. So it seems people that are uniformed can do anything to us. Yes, and we are we are going a very dangerous road. Yeah. Because you know, people can only take this much. You can see the emotions in that woman. Yeah. Yeah. So people can take that much, but uh, at some point, something will break. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So this is quite unfortunate, and the government had something to say about it. So I want to say that as government, as minister for the province, what transpired is very regrettable. And we are saddened by the loss of a young boy who was only 15 years old. That death should have been avoided. And the officers or whoever was involved avoided to use live ammunition. I think live ammunition can only be used where uh, it should be the, the least thing an officer should think of to use. Let me put it this way. It should be a, a least thing any officer or anyone who think of using, especially to people who are harmless. So as government, we are also saddened for that loss. We sympathize with the family, our prayers are with the family, and the community of Kankoyo. Your prayers mean nothing 
to a family that knows you will not do anything about it if you get the way this man is talking firstly we can tell he's not bothered he's speaking because that's his job secondly we can tell that he's not saying anything about what will be done to the officers that did it so sorry is not enough sir sorry i, I, th I think you've spoken my mind but <laughs> <laughs> yeah you see to me i'll call it what it, th that's useless what he said yeah those are useless words very useless the the upnd are behaving the same way that the patriotic friend were behaving yeah and if they're behaving the same way i mean insanity is expecting different results yeah so the this, same way the barrier of the yes of the boy yeah mm. so the same way that the the same way that we treated the pf is the same way that we're going to treat the upnd because he's speaking as a voter yes <laughs> they are not showing us any difference yeah. and you know it's sad that we have to jump to elections because i mean this is to see only... any form of change exactly this is yeah. only 20 we don't have to wait five years no we have to see change no we voted because we wanted to see change yeah and we should talk now but now when we talk it's falling on deaf ears mm. the family itself this these are not my words the family wanted one thing they wanted the person who is responsible for this to be brought to book and they actually said because they buried on friday by the way yeah the boy was shot on monday last week yeah and they buried on friday the family said will not bury until there's justice until you guys name the person who did this or until we should know that the, that something is happening to this person yeah because for and, security and reasons honest, probably you can't speaking, just come out straight and say okay it's a bad moon shot this man yeah, I, yeah. God forbid, but honestly yes, speaking, God forbid, <laughs> but what we needed they, is they movement. don't even have to really investigate to know who did it they My just friend, need to get the bullet once they got to their station they already knew who did they, it. Yeah, exactly yes because they, don't they count bullets before they leave i'm telling you that they do they do not do need to do that they already knew that once they is, got back to their station they knew that it's this guy who shot yeah then they who say killed the boy. sir you are protected yes there's nothing so, that will happen to that's you. a good point as a matter of fact here's an allowance so to me it is the zns command that is to blame it is the upnd government that is to blame it yeah. is ultimately the commander-in-chief haka in the Ichidema, that is to blame for no justice for this boy yeah but you know these guys are acting clever even hh himself he has and not in spoken our next about episode, this if we blink twice <laughs> then we <know>. <laughs> yeah <laughs> to me you know the, the 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 most heartbreaking thing is that this is a four this is a poor family yeah yes this is a poor family of kankoyo kankoyo if you didn't know is a uh, kankoyo to mufuliria is like a a, a george compound of Osaka. Osaka. Mm. exactly so this is a very poor family so i followed this story i saw the funeral house i heard from the father who on the burial day the father because he was caught by diamond tv mm. and he said outrightly to say there's nothing that we can do we wanted justice now for I'm our child we wanted ch justice for our child before he's buried he's buried but there's nothing that we can do and because exactly yeah so that's how heartbreaking this is yeah and this is how much this upnd government and the commander-in-chief hh is altering lives yeah and uh, <sighs> if, if, if we are really concerned for the future of the show but anyway. yeah, be, uh, my, my friend be concerned with me <laughs> <laughs> because said for me what i'm saying here does not uh, in any way yeah. uh say what uh, we stand for as amazing minds <laughs> no they are not representing amazing minds in what i'm saying what i'm saying i'm responsible myself no anyway we are yes under, we're under so a, if a any speech government if anyone apparently. under a free speech government where apparently no this is not a free speech government <laughs> this is a brutal regime no that anyway, is as good as a patriotic grade front. 12s we are finishing school this is a brutal regime grade 12, that is as bad as the U, as the pf government last week so if we continue if not subscribed if we continue <laughs> dealing with this with kid gloves next time it can be anyone <sighs> next time it can be anyone yeah and this will continue happening it will only be a matter of time before they are actually sent to kill civilians Exactly. We saw that in the patriotic front, mm. and I'm 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 confident to say this because it's HH himself who led us in blaming Ed Galungu. Yeah. When Samantha died, 
HH stood on a podium and said, This is to blame Ed Galungu. Ed Galungu was killed. Right now, <laughs> when he was in the copper belts, when he was saying, He mentioned that Ed Galungu wants to come back and kill children. Mm. So, for this child that has died, it is only right that we blame the commander in chief, especially now that no, nothing has been done. Yeah. We thought the UPNT government was different. Yeah. If they had to ask me this when I was going to vote, I would say if this happened in the UPND government, the next day the person who did this is going to be facing the law. Yeah. Either court martial or is going to go to court because this is outright murder. It is. This is a public execution. Yeah. Someone killed like a dog. If you yeah. see the actual videos of where they take videos of the boy and the other pictures, you would actually cry. I invite you to look for those videos and weep as I traumatize did. myself. Anyway, exactly. uh, <laughs> as Chofia is coming down, grade twelves were finished in school uh, last week, and on a brighter note, we had some reasonable ones. Uh, check out the excitement of these. What school is this? A Saint Edmund's Secondary School. Saint Edmund's, come down. I'm calm, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this was St. Edmunds. This is how grade 12 should finish school. Did you see the pictures of uh, Trident? Those were not grade 12s, though. They were grade, they were 13 graders or whatever it's called. Okay. Uh, it's no, like I didn't grade, see that. It's grade 13. It's like the A levels, but they put it as a grade. Uh, I didn't just, see that. Just to confuse us. And yeah, but, us but you know, Trident is, not, Trident is not in our scope, by the way. <laughs> I went to an expensive school. <laughs> <laughs> you went to a goodish school. Do you know, when some people meet me, they are actually convinced that ah, you, you must have gone to Baobab. Okay. Or, or Mpelembe. Yeah, because it was a Kalayako yeah. and uh, Kazungu. So I, actually, I actually don't suit to go to the school I went to. Uh, so I mean, I've got a few boys <laughs> near to one guys. I don't suit going to, to having gone to that school. A <laughs> few boys, you see them. Oh, by their faces. <laughs> <laughs> anyway hope you've enjoyed the show yeah anyway by the way it's good that i've let the, this out of my um out of my chest yeah the the thing for the zns boy yeah right now i've lost hope that to have justice for the boy yeah of course the mayor the the, the member of parliament said that they are going to help the family engage some lawyers mm. yeah but we know how this thing Which is they going. Always this say. thing is going to end up yeah yeah but myself personally stop answering our cause. yes yeah but myself personally i knew that this is the chance that i had to talk about this on this show yeah hey guys but, listen listen subscribe the more we grow the more influence we have you see we can become a voice subscribe that is true yeah and i'm going to take it upon myself as i was saying that i know that i'm going to have chance to talk about this today on this show because to us this is just another story yeah yeah tomorrow or the other on wednesday on friday the other monday we'll have other stories yeah this will pass but this child will never come back the family the void that has been created in the family will never come back yeah so me personally out of this show i'm going to make sure that when i have the chance I ask the people who are responsible, who are the government of the UPND, to ask them to say, why shouldn't Zambians blame for you, blame you for this? Yeah. Yeah. So if justice is not saved, then we'll kick them out. They will kick them out. We kicked out the PF. Through the voting booth. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean. If you're not subscribed, <laughs> people, people might start thinking we're seditious. <laughs> please. Tr we're, has, not, uh, we're not violent. <laughs> we're very... They, they are watching our words. <laughs> like, ah. Okay. <laughs> no, we're not calling for anyone to be seditious. Yeah, no, yeah. through elections. We are calling yeah. for people to talk so that these people should understand that we know these things. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the show. Myself? Yeah. Of course, yes. You've let things out your chest? Yes, yes. I'm better now. Great. Yeah. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe, hit that bell, and share. We'll be back here on Wednesday uh, with another good show for you. And Friday with Bible Talks. From Joffy and I, it's goodbye. Sign arrow. Hey, like what you see? I know you do. Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao.